Hey guys, welcome back to the Jessica Ruth Knits podcast. I am Jessica and I am your host. This is a podcast, this is a podcast about knitting and a little bit of homesteading and some tiny house living all thrown in together. But again, it's mainly knitting. Um, you can find me on Facebook as Jessica Knits. You can find me on Instagram as Jessica Ruth Knits. And you can find me on Ravelry as Sergeant Griff's Girl. That's S-G-T-G-R-I-F-F-S-G-I-R-L. So today is Sunday, October 30th, and I'm sorry for the really bad lighting, but it's getting late in the afternoon. My husband has been hunting all day, and I have been working in the kitchen. Um, we're trying to put new countertops in, so I've been doing that all day. It's super hot, super sweaty, so I'm a mess. I'm covered in sawdust, but I thought I should take this opportunity real quick while he's out in the woods and record the episode. So, um, I have, well, one big finished object is my sweater. This is my mama vertebrae that I worked, oh, you can't really see it. It's like this. It's just an open front cardigan, so it's not supposed to close all the way um, like that. And then the back is just like that. So yeah, I'm super excited about this one. It took me about three days. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I was super obsessed with knitting it and it was all I wanted to work on. So, um, unfortunately, as soon as I finished it, it has been in the high 80s all week. So... It's way too hot to wear it. Um, I'm pretty much living in tank tops and um, I'll put on a real shirt if we go out, but it's way too hot. So that was my main project that I finished. And then I have been working on Christmas socks. So last week I showed you I'd finished this one. This is for my dad for Christmas. Um, and I am almost finished with the second one. So it's right about there. So I just have that much more to go. So it shouldn't take me very long at all. But it's just a basic vanilla sock, 64 stitches, uh, fish lips, kiss heel, toe up, obviously. This is the Knit Picks Felici. And it's in the colorway Beyond the Wall, which is the Game of Thrones colorway. And I love it. Um, it's got three stripes of blue and three stripes of gray. And I think it's pretty fun. So, I made that one. Well, almost made that one. Then, oops, it's all tangled. Okay. Then I started these socks for my brother-in-law. So you might remember that we just went to Hawaii for my sister's wedding. So this is for her new husband. And she said his favorite color is blue. So I made one. This is Malabrigo. I don't remember the colorway, but it's just Malabrigo sock. Um, toe up again, 64 stitches, fish lips, kiss heel. It's pretty good. So I made one. And I'm about at the same spot I am on that other sock for my dad. It's hard to see it, but it's like that. So I just have this much more to go. And then I will be done with his socks. So then I only have, after I finish both of these pair, I only have one more pair of socks to knit for my other brother-in-law. Um, so these are done. These are Haya Haya Sharps. They're both size zero, but the double points are chow goos, um, the metal double points, and these are wooden Haya Haya Sharps in the size zero. And I go back and forth on whether I like double points or magic looping, but I think this is definitely faster. My husband and I went to the movies the other night, and I had to make sure that I was at least done with the toe, so that way I could just knit this portion in the movie theater while we were watching the movie. And I was going strong and I was doing it and then I dropped a stitch and it was too dark to fix it. So I just had to put my knitting away. 
um, for the rest of the movie, which was fine. I at least got a couple inches done. But um, I always try to have a movie knitting project if I can. So, yeah, that is all I have been working on. Um, this past week I was pretty sick. Well, I mean, not seriously sick, but I just really didn't feel good. I think I slept, like, 18 hours on Monday. Yeah. Um... I don't, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't throwing up or anything. I just, my stomach felt awful and all I wanted to do was sleep. So I didn't get a ton of knitting done this week. And then between being sick and going to the gym and working on the tiny house, I just, knitting's kind of been on the back burner. But um, I'm hoping to finish both pairs of socks today because tomorrow is Halloween. <coughs> excuse me, and I have some Halloween yarn that I want to cast on. So I need these needles to be free so that I can cast on my Halloween socks. So this is my freckled whimsy bag. Um, I love it. There's sloths, there's like this um, chameleon, lizard, I don't know. And then it's got the knitting fabric up here. And she, and it's got a really good handle. Um, and she really interfaces hers, and the whole, the inside is that. Now sometimes I like a lot of interfacing, like this will stand up straight. So sometimes I like that, but sometimes I prefer one that you can just throw in your purse and squish. I mean this one you can squish, but it's not as floppy as some of the other ones I have. So um, I like both kinds, it just totally depends on where I'm taking my project as to what kind of project bag I want. So, speaking of project bags, I was contacted by Tammy, who is Knit One Lasso Two um, on Instagram, and I believe on Ravelry too. But she contacted me and asked if she could send me something for my birthday. And guys, she is so sweet. She sent me this project bag. It's got florals, and I don't know if you can see, it's like sequin-y. Um, I mean, it's just subtle sequins, just to give it a little, a little glint of sparkle. And then there's this pretty floral down here. And this one's interfaced. Again, it's not quite as stiff as that one, um, but it will, it'll stand up on its own. Look at that. It's got a gorgeous boxed bottom. And the inside is floral. And then there's a, um, a pocket... You guys can't really see it. There. But it's a two-sided pocket. Like that. And so that's done in this really pretty gingham-y green. Like that. So, um, thank you so much, Tammy. I, it just made my day. This came the day after I'd spent the whole day in bed. So I was in a funk, um, because I felt like I hadn't done anything the day before. And I still wasn't really feeling well. And then I went to the mailbox, and this was there. Um, so, and then she included a really pretty stitch marker. So this is her card. Like that. Um, she's on Etsy as Knit One Lasso 2. It's L-A-S-S-O 2. Um, so you guys should go check her out. Her bag is very well made. Um, I can't say en enough good things about it. She's got her little tag on the side, and she's got a really good detachable handle. I love these, because you can detach them and you can put them on the zipper pull too. Um, so either way, they, they just work really well. So Tammy, thank you so much. I absolutely love it. Um, to everybody else, you should go check out her shop if you are in the market for a project bag, because it is very well made and very gorgeous. And I can't wait to fill it. So I had to keep it nice and fresh to show on the podcast. But now that I've shown it to you guys, I can fill it up with goodies. So I have two acquisitions. Man, this is going to be a short episode today. Um, which is probably good because you guys might be tired of me droning on and on. But my first acquisition, I ordered some Halloween yarn. So everybody, it seems, on Instagram has been making Halloween socks. 
So I thought I would order some yarn and I would cast them on on Halloween. Um, so I ordered this yarn on Etsy and Kelly, the gal that I ordered it from, the shop is called Ethereal Fibers. Um, she asked, when she sent me the email saying, you know, thank you for your order, she asked me if she could send something along for the podcast. And of course I said yes. So she sent a super sweet card um, and she has a giveaway or a coupon code for you guys. So I will show you that at the end. But at first I'll show you the yarn I ordered. So it's got it's spark. Oh, sorry, the light is horrible. Oh, um, it's got purples and oranges and blacks. It just reminds me of a witch. You know, it's called Witchcraft is the colorway. It's on her Starlight Sock Base. It's 7520, 75 Merino, 20 Nylon, and 5% Stellina. It's 438 yards and 100 grams. And it's in her Halloween series. <coughs> so that's her card. And this is exactly what I was looking for. So these will hopefully be wound up tonight so that I can cast them on tomorrow and they'll be my Halloween socks. Um, so thank you so much, Kelly. I love it. I'll definitely be ordering again. Um, and especially now that we have a coupon code. So what she sent along is this one. And oh my goodness, guys, this is gorgeous. It's got, um, there's yellows and mustards and browns and white and blue. It's kind of like Look, it's like denim jeans with a white t-shirt, brown Birkenstocks, and my yellow cardigan. See how well that would go? Pretty well. So this is, it's in her series, Autocorrect series, and it's Goodnight My Angle. I think it was supposed to be Angel, but Autocorrected Angle. So it's on the same sock base as the other one. And, um... It's got like a brown Stellina. It's not... Maybe it's like a bronze Stellina? I don't know if it'll show up very well. No. Okay, there's the colors. Isn't that gorgeous? So, this is going to be our 100 subscriber giveaway. I think when I checked earlier today, we were at 92. So as soon as we hit 8 more, I'll open up... Uh, thread in the Ravelry group. The, I just did a giveaway on Instagram and I posted it on Instagram and Facebook. Um, so I think this next giveaway for the subscribers will be on Ravelry just to try to reward those of you who are more in the knitting, well, in the knitting community. But I feel like Instagram gets everybody. Um, sorry, I'm sitting on the floor. <coughs> So as soon as we hit 100, I'll let you guys know, and I'll open up a thread on the Ravelry forum group um, with some sort of prompt, and that will be the prize. So I'm super excited about that. It's gorgeous, and I really want to keep it for myself, but I might see if she has another one in her shop. So hang on. Look who came to say hi. I think Bartok's made an appearance on every episode so far. I think she just really likes the yarn and the crinkling. Okay, so for the podcast, she says, I hope your viewers enjoy. Coupon code Jessica Ruth Knits 16. And it expires 1130, and that is for 15% off anything in her shop. So go check her out. It's Ethereal Fibers on Etsy. I think that's focusing pretty good. Uh, it's just etherealfibers.etsy.com and use the coupon code JessicaRuthKnits16 for 15% off. So thank you so much, Kelly. Um, I'm going to enjoy my Halloween socks and I'm sure whoever wins the giveaway will greatly enjoy their new yarn. So that is that. All right. We're just flying through. All right, lastly, another acquisition. I ordered, I pre-ordered some Nomadic yarn, Nomadic yarns in the Milk and Cookies color. 
And look at what this is. So, for those of you that don't know, it's Nomadic Yarns. Milk and cookies. Fire talk, leave it alone. <coughs> so, this is the cookies. Look at that. Doesn't it just look like cookies? And then there's, like, the black tweed is the chocolate chips. And the milk. Now, I was going to put them together, except they're different bases, and the milk one, I don't know if you guys can see, is so much thinner than the cookies. So I don't know. Is that going to be weird if I put them together? I was thinking cuffs, toes, heels, and the milk, and the rest in the cookies. But um, I have some cream that's more that's this thickness so I thought maybe I would just save the milk colorway and use my cream like this so the cookies is it's the scruffy gnome um, base it's 85% merino 15% tweed and nylon and the milk oh, that's 435 yards the milk is on the house gnome base it's 300 yards and it's 75% merino 25% nylon and look what they also sent A gnome cookie cutter. How cute is that? So, because it's milk and cookies, and they're gnome makers, isn't that so fun? So I had pre-ordered this on my birthday, actually, um, and it came today. So that wasn't too long to wait, but I'm, I'm just not sure why they made a set with yarns that go together but on two different bases. So I don't know. If anybody has experience with using a thinner sock for the heels, cuffs, and toes, will you guys let me know how that worked out? Um, otherwise I think I'll just substitute what I have and save the cream for something else. So, I mean, I could put that in a shawl. So we'll see. But um, I love the cookies. Love it. But I'm kind of thinking I could have ordered just the cookies if I would have realized how different they were. And the gnome cookie cutter is just the icing on the cake. So. Oh, and I also ordered, in that same order, a little tape measure with the little girl. And it's like she's picking through balls of yarn with her knitting needles. I just thought it was super cute. I think it's supposed to be spaghetti. It looks like she's trying to eat it. I don't know. But she's cute, and I always need more tape measures, so I ordered that as well. Alrighty. Um, what am I going to be knitting this week? I am going to start on my Halloween socks, like I said. Next episode, you guys should see at least the two Christmas pairs of socks finished, and then the progress on my Halloween socks. My girlfriend Heather and I are starting a sweater knit along together on Thursday at our knit group and so we're going to be knitting oh it's the spin cycle sweater so it's just a it's a pretty basic looking sweater it's top down um, I'm using some for the, the collar the cuffs and the waistband I'm going to be using like a royal blue color and then the rest of the sweater will be a cream I think it's an undyed yarn <coughs> and it's in the same oh goodness um this is out of shepherd's wool and so my next the sweater I'm casting on is the same it's shepherd's wool so I had originally I was looking for yellow to do the spin cycle sweater but when I found this stuff they only had three skeins and I didn't think that was enough for that whole full sweater which is why I did an open front cardigan because I thought that's kind of like half a sweater and so um, I thought I would have enough for half a sweater but not a full sweater so <laughs> sorry Bartok just ran across um, so I had the cream in my stash and I thought if I found just one of the yellows I could do the the collar the cuffs and the waistband in yellow and the rest cream I thought that would be pretty but then when they had three 
I knew I needed to do something with all three and not just one. So I looked through my stash and I had a really pretty royal blue. Um, so I'll do that for the collar and the cuffs and the waistband and then the rest will be cream. And I'm hoping it doesn't bleed when I wash it. Otherwise I might just have to dye the whole thing like a baby blue and then it'll just be a darker blue for the collar. So that's Thursday. Tomorrow is Monday, Halloween. Um, I'm going to go over to my girlfriend's house and go knit with her. So if I don't finish my the Christmas socks today, I'll take them with me over to her house and go knit. And then I can cast on my Halloween socks as well. Tim works tomorrow night, so we're not doing anything for Halloween. Um, he works at, he's a sheriff's deputy, and so he works at the local jail. And so he's thinking it's going to be crazy with all the Halloween inmates coming in um you know whether they get drunk or just act stupid or whatever so he's not really looking forward to going to work tomorrow but um he'll get through it so let's see oh no okay i was gonna try to get her she was just laying at my feet but as soon as i reach for her she doesn't want to be on the podcast um that is all the knitting I have for you guys. It's only at 21 minutes, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the tiny house because I've been working a ton on that. So if you're only here for the knitting, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you watching the podcast, and yeah, hopefully next week I'll have more knitting if I'm not, um, if I don't get sick again. So thank you, I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. If you want to hear about the tiny house, stay tuned because I have a lot to tell you. So the tiny house. Um, we were living in the tiny house, but it is still under construction. So basically we sleep here, we hang out here, but we've been going over to the camper to cook meals. Um, the, we have the camp, we have a camper parked over my grandparents house, which is where we lived before we started doing the tiny house. And it has, I mean, it's got like full amenities. So it's got, you know, the hot water, it's got the air conditioning and all of that. So we have been eating over there because then I can just wash the dishes. Um, but I really am tired of going back and forth and I really just want to be 100% at the tiny house. So that means I need to get the kitchen put together. Um, I used to work at the yarn shop and when she closed, she gave me the like the cabinets and the countertop from like the checkout area so I have these random cabinets but the way she had them set up there's only I only have a counter spot for one of them which meant out of the two cabinets that I have one cabinet doesn't have a counter one has a countertop that it like overhangs funny I don't know how to describe it um I'll try to put a picture in to show you but it's just, we, we had to redo the countertops regardless in order to have a functional kitchen. So there's an Ikea that's supposed to be opening up in Memphis. And it was supposed to be open this fall. But now they're saying winter. And so they keep just pushing the opening, you know, further and further. And what we'd really wanted to do was get butcher block countertops from Ikea. But now that they pushed it back to winter... You know, and who knows in the winter if they'll say spring. Um, I can't wait that long for countertops. So we were going to go look. Um, I heard somewhere that lumber liquidators had butcher block countertops. So I thought we could drive up there and go look at their countertops. And then I just thought, you know what, I can make countertops. So the fun thing about living in a tiny house is you have the freedom to just try it. I mean, I use like three boards to make the counters and because the space is so small that's all it took so if I hate it and we can go to lumber liquidators and buy real countertops um, but if I like it you know I made the counters pretty cheap and you know and they're funky and they're one of a kind and they're not like every other house in America so I bought the wood pieces I just got um, two by eights and I thought originally that I was going to stain them to look like butcher block. But yesterday and today, okay, so put that story on hold because that'll come into play in just a minute. We also need, or we needed a place to eat. 
we had a big oak table in the tiny house, but it was just taking up too much space. And we needed to get it out in order to bring in a desk for my husband's, or well, for the computer, and so that he can do school. Because he goes to school online. Um, so he needs, like, a proper desk. <coughs> so we had this old oak um, antique library table that we thought we would bring in for his desk. But then that meant we needed a place for us to sit down and eat, you know, like dinner together. So we don't have room in the tiny house for two tables. We barely, I'm sorry, we barely have room for the desk table. So I started thinking about, um, like other ways to make a table. I'm trying to think of the word, but, um, like kind of unconventional dining arrangements. And so I thought, okay, well, a lot of tiny houses have the fold down tables. So like they, if this is the wall, you know, they can, they're like this during the day and then you can just prop them out and then have your chairs, you know, when you're ready to eat. And then you can just fold it down after you're done. And that, that works for a lot of tiny houses, but I wanted something I don't want to feel like every time I want to eat I have to set up a table, you know, kind of like I'm camping. I want it to be, this is my table, this is where we eat, period. So that got me thinking of like a bar stool and like a countertop. And so our kitchen, it was kind of a galley kitchen to begin with. So on this side of the kitchen area, the kitchen's at the back half of the tiny house. On this side we have the Hoosier cabinet, which is kind of like our pantry, and then, so the Hoosier cabinet's here and the fridge is here. And then on this side we had the cabinets, the stove, and the other cabinet, and the sink. Um, and so it was very spacious, but it was kind of unnecessary, like unnecessarily big for a tiny house, um, because it's probably... I think it's like 12 feet across. So that meant the kitchen, you know, was like 10 feet apart. Which works and would be fine if we weren't in a tiny house and if we weren't crunched for space. So, anyways, what I did was I thought I would use one of our antique dressers to make an island in the kitchen. So, the dresser is like, yay big. Like, countertop. Like, counter height. But the bar stools that I had were too tall to sit at, if I just extended that, they were too tall to sit at the counter. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, they're taller than the counter. So that meant I had to make a countertop that was, like, bar height. So, we are sitting in front of it. This is, right here is the counter. Um, so I'm kind of underneath the counter. And I took my dresser. So it's, like, a long, skinny dresser. And then I built up, it's about eight, eight inches taller than the dresser for the counters. And there, the counter top is actually leaves from the oak table that we're not using. So we never once, since we've had the table, we've used, we've never used the leaves. Like the, you can extend it out. It's a circle table. So you can add, there's three leaves to make it a big long oval. So instead I used two of the leaves and made a bar top. And then these are these old antique corbels that we had. Um, we have a ton of antique stuff. So I wanted to be able to use them in a functional way in the tiny house. So they are holding up the bar top. And then I just took scrap pieces of 1x4s and painted them in different colors to make the um, kind of the kickboard of the barstool area. So this is where your feet would go, like right here. Um, so I made that yesterday, and Tim and his buddy have already ate at it. It works perfectly. There's plenty of room for two people to sit at it, and you can go on the other side of it, and you've got the whole dresser countertop, plus you've got the up top, the bar countertop. So it adds a ton of counter space to the kitchen, which is exactly what I wanted. So I made that yesterday. And last night we painted all the boards, and then I had to wait for them to dry in the, this morning. And then I added, or I screwed them all on and added the corbels. 
this morning. But, um, so, back to the countertops. Okay, because it ties in, I promise. So, I was thinking I would just use the blank, the 2 by 8 boards, I would lay them like three and a half across, and that's my counter width, and I would stain them to look like oak, <coughs> and so then they would look like butcher block, because that was what I wanted in my head. And it still would look really pretty, but um, once I started painting these, I thought how cool would it be to have painted countertops. So that's exactly what I did. I painted, there's three big wood pieces and then a little half piece and the backsplash. So the three wood, it's gray, white, and blue, like these three here. And then the little half piece is the yellow and the backsplash is the yellow. So they are, I need Tim's help to finish screwing on the backsplash because I can't hold it and screw underneath the countertops. Um, like, my arms aren't long enough to do both. So, as soon as Tim helps me screw in the backsplash, the counters are done. And we have to go into town tonight and buy some, like, polyurethane seal for the countertops. And hopefully tomorrow, no, maybe Tuesday. I'm at my girlfriend's tomorrow. Tuesday, maybe, I can seal them and then they'll be ready to go. So, uh, so yeah, the good thing is, if I hate them... If we decide they're too funky and we want something more standard, then we can just go to Ikea when it opens and get a little piece of butcher block and call it good. <coughs> because of the dresser, the countertop on the dresser, we didn't need a ton of extra counter space. So, even if we rip them out every year, it's like maybe $40. So, it's not that bad. Um, but yeah. That's what I was doing all day today. I was measuring and cutting and measuring and forgetting and measuring and cutting and um, I only have one ouchie. I just got a big, I slid my hand along one of the wood beams and it was rough and it took out a chunk. You know like when you get a splinter but it was like a whole chunk of my finger was gone. So I had to put a bandaid on it so that I would stop hitting it in the same spot again. But that was the only catastrophe, which is not very bad at all. Um, yeah, and hopefully this week I'll have counters and then we can put the sink in and have a proper kitchen. So we'll have the kitchen, we'll have the dining area, we have the library table. This week I have to go down to the phone co-op and sign us up for phone service and for internet. And then we can bring the computer over here and move everything out of the camper. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, we, oh, our wood stove. So we got, we went to the ReStore, which is the Habitat for Humanity. When they rehab um, homes, they take out the old stuff and they sell it at the ReStore. So, or they'll sell like the extra materials if they didn't use it all. Um, so we found some tiles to go underneath the wood stove and they were like 50 cents a piece and so I think it was like five dollars for all the tile that we bought. Uh, not very bad at all. And we put up the heat reflecting, I'm looking at it right now, like we put up the heat reflecting board on the corner. So I don't know how to do it. Okay so it's like this. So the wood stove is going to go right here. So this side has heat reflective board. This side has heat reflective board. There's a heat reflective board underneath the tile. Um, and my uncle is the fire marshal, so he gave us all of the code, you know, like all the specs that we have to do everything by. So we're making sure it will be safe, it will be up to code, um, and we're, we just want to make sure that we do everything right the first time so we don't have to come back and redo it. So once we found out the code, we went ahead and tiled in the tile. I need to grout it and let the grout dry before we can bring the wood stove in. But right now, it's like 85 degrees outside. I don't even want to look at the wood stove. Um, I mean, I do. I want to look at it because I want it to be cold enough that we need the wood stove. But it's not. I've had the fans running all day. The doors are open. The windows are open. It is ridiculously hot. 
So, yeah, so I'm going to grout the tiles. We're going to put corrugated tin up over the, the ugly heat board because it just looks like concrete right now. Um, so we have to do, we have to do the tile, the grout the tile, do the tin before we can move in the wood stove. Because once the wood stove's in, it's really heavy. So I want to make sure everything's in place before we move that in. But yeah, we re-finished it. Um, it was all rusty and gross looking. So we took a wire brush to it. They have stove paint, like high heat paint for wood stoves that you can repaint to your wood stove. So we bought that at the wood stove store and repainted it. Um, we just have to get the pipe and cut the hole in the wall to get it all in. But yeah, so hopefully the kitchen will be done soon and the wood stove will be in soon. And then hopefully the weather will be cold enough to need a wood stove. Excuse me. I think that's it. Um, I'm trying to look around to see if there's anything else. That's pretty much everything we did this week. Yeah, I'm about to go do chores. Nothing really exciting on the animal front. Oh, one of the one of the viewers asked if I could take pictures of the chicks, and I forgot who it was. And Instagram won't let me look back in my notifications far enough. So whoever you are, thank you for asking for pictures of the chicks, and I will try to include them at the end of the video. Um. Oh, also. I don't know if it's the same person, but somebody asked, <coughs> can't tell if Tim's back. They asked where Tim was from, so he is from Texas. We met in Texas after I had moved there, after I graduated college. So he was at Fort Hood. We had actually, okay, I'll get into the story. Um, we had been pen pals for a couple years before, and... He was stationed in Iraq, and you could sign up, like, to write a soldier, you know, who doesn't get very much mail. Um, and so it wasn't anything, it wasn't, like, a dating service at all. And we never went into it, into being pen pals, looking for anything. <clears throat> but I was living in Spain um, during my junior year of college. I was going to the university there. And so I was, lone, like, homesick. And he was in Iraq, and so he was homesick, and so we could write letters and talk about how much we missed home together. Bar talk stop. Um, so we started talking my junior year of college, right when I was in Spain, and then <clears throat> I came home, I finished up my senior year, I graduated, and I moved to Texas. And I knew he was somewhere in Texas. And so I emailed him and I said, hey, you know, I just moved. I moved to Austin. And he was at Fort Hood. I said, I'm in Austin. You know, I don't know. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. If you're ever in the area. But if you are, you know, it'd be fun to meet face to face after so many years of writing. I guess it was only two years. But after writing for so long. So he wrote back and he's like, oh, you're only like half an hour away from me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he came down one day and we went out to the movies and it was really awkward because I already knew so much about him. So it wasn't like the typical first date, you know, like, so what do you do? What's your family like? Because we'd been writing for so long. So I already knew all about his family and I already knew what his job was and I already knew how his week went. Um, <clears throat> so it was just kind of like, we jumped in to feeling like we'd been friends forever because we already knew so much about each other. Um, yeah, so we started hanging out and he would come down on, you know, like a weekend. We'd go out to dinner because it was only half hour away. So he could come down, you know, for the evening. Or I would go up to Fort Hood. Um, I'm not a big fan of Fort Hood, so more often than not he came down to Austin. But anyways, he is from the Houston area, but we met when I was living in Austin. So, I hope that answers that question. Um, yeah. And then we got married at Fort, like, when he was stationed at Fort Hood. Right after we got married, he was deployed for 15 months. So that was super hard. He came back, um, 
And then the next summer, we got stationed in Maryland for four or five years. And then we came back to Texas. So, yeah, that answers that. But, okay, I think that was all the questions. I'll try to include pictures of the chicks and of the dining area and of the cabinet or the countertops in progress. Also, I have to repaint the cabinets because they're green. And they were really pretty in the shop, but it does not match my blues or yellows. So, I'm just going to paint them white since the countertops are so crazy colored. I don't need crazy cabinets as well. So, that's that. Um, I'm going to call it good. We're at 40 minutes, which is plenty long enough. I think half this episode was about the tiny house. So, next episode hopefully will be more knitting. Um, we go on Wednesday to Memphis for our fertility appointment. So I'm going to see what the doctor has to say. I'm not sure why we're going back because, <coughs> um, you know, he said I should lose 75 pounds before we start treatments. So I don't know if Wednesday is just like, are you losing weight appointment or what? Um, I'm, I think we need to go over my re blood work results from last time because I haven't heard anything. But, um, yeah, so we'll see what they say on Wednesday. But we're going on Wednesday to Memphis, and yeah, that's it. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully next episode we will maybe be at our 100 subscribers, and we can announce the giveaway, and open the thread up, and I can get the yarn out to you guys. Um, yeah, I hope you all have a very safe Halloween. Be safe out there. Have fun. Um, eat some candy in my honor, because I cannot eat. Well, I'm not eating any sugar, so... You guys can sugar it up for me and let me know how it goes. Alright, have a great day. I'm off to go do chores because I can hear the goats and the dogs barking. So, thank you for watching and happy knitting. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.